back hope you've had a good week and if you're new hello you're most welcome here at my home in rural Sussex England this week you find me on the guest cottage veranda and we're going to be decorating revamping restyling this space I love a rustic vibe and I love nothing more than a bit of upcycling reinventing things shopping my home shopping the garden and I always challenge myself to try and do a space without spending any money so let's get into it. This is the guest cottage which had a full renovation last year and that included building this veranda. The floor I've made out of reclaimed scaffold boards. They're a fabulous choice for flooring because they need little to no attention whatsoever. The vintage bathtub was actually found on eBay and it was such a find because it's got this lid that comes with it and we're thinking it's around 1800s if not earlier. There is a maker's plaque on the side and originally it would have had a section underneath where you would have put wood and then burnt it in order to heat the water. But fortunately, we've got modern plumbing. I put the bath over where the main drainage is and then ran hot and cold feeds out from the bathroom, which is just behind it. The plumber and I made these taps out of copper piping and bits of plumbing materials. They were originally shiny copper, but I love the way that it's aged over the year. Now here in the UK, it's quite unusual to have a veranda, a porch, you know, whatever terminology you're using. And therefore it's difficult to find porch swings. This one I found on Wayfair and it was a very dark teak, so I've just lightened it. The lantern was another of my eBay finds. So it was covered in black paint and I got all that stripped back. And the dresser was actually an auction find for £50. It was covered in purple and yellow paint. It took me four days to strip it. I then gave it a distressed paint finish. I used the same product that I'd used on the outside of the cottage itself. But because of the old wood, it took the paint very differently and I just love the effect. The sofa was picked up at a charity shop for just £40 and it came with some great cushions as well. The rug was bought from Wayfair last year, so it's had four seasons now down on this veranda floor. And while I've been cleaning, I've given this a really good vacuum and it's come up beautifully. The colours have survived really well. It was such a good value rug as well. I think I only paid about 80 something pounds for it. And you can see even the underneath is beautifully clean. So let's get decorating. I'm gonna hang mirrors on this wall. I've got some charity shop finds to go here. I'd found these for 10 pounds each, very dark wood frames. So I've used Annie Sloan chalk paint, a few coats of, and then just rubbed them back and hung them with very strong string, uh, thick twine. I love using mirrors outside. I love to see the reflection of the garden in them, but you've just got to be careful as to the angle because you don't want to cause any fires. Now I'm happy with these three mirrors this side of the door. On the other side, I've got this blank wall and I have a cunning plan. I picked up this oak panel at auction several years ago and I think it's actually the bedhead of a single bed. I originally painted it up in white and grey chalk paint, distressed it slightly, thinking that when I'd done the renovations on the main house, I would use it in one of the bedrooms and create a bed from it. But it's never found its way into the house. So now I'm going to distress it way back and bring out lots of that glorious wood grain. This is oak, it's beautiful. So as you can see here, as I'm rubbing further back, you can see more and more of this wood coming out. And this heavily chipped finish is right up my street at the moment. This is way too heavy for me to attempt to hang on the wall of the veranda. So I'm thinking of actually putting it on the floor, it's then got a shelf and then sitting this mirror that I found at a charity shop for just 20 pounds, unbelievable value, and sitting that on top of the shelf. 
it's got a really bad finish on it. So I'm just going to go straight over this with Annie Sloan chalk paint. And it's going to be in my all time favourite colour, Old White. The only prep I'm giving the mirror is a really good clean. I've then roughly gone over it with two to three coats of the Old White. That's going to get smoothed down as I go over and do the distressing. After distressing, I use a blade to take the chalk paint off the mirror. And here are the two sat together. I think they're going to work a treat. So let's get those over to the veranda. Hubby's helped me carry them over because they are really quite heavy, quite awkward. And he's told me to wait until he's free. Yeah, right. You'll recognise these brackets if you saw my Five Mirrors, Five Ways video. I salvaged them from a mirror I was upcycling. So I'm going to go with one bracket in the middle there just to hold that. What are we calling this piece? The carved panel against the wall because all the weight of it is going to be on the deck. And it's really there just to stop it toppling forward. So once I've shuffled that into position, I'm just going to use a self-driving screw straight in, super solid, that's not going anywhere. Although this mirror may be going somewhere quite soon <laughs> if I don't keep a steady grip. I know I should have waited for hubby, but I don't have any patience. And now I've just realised, tape measure, I've left it on the other side of the veranda. Oh, don't move. Yes, there we go. Whew, all done. You didn't see this. It's fine. I do like to risk it for a biscuit. Here are the cushions that came with the charity shop sofa. Uh, they're a pale green colour and I've had them on that sofa all the way through the end of last summer, autumn, winter. So I am going to give them a clean. I haven't had a machine like this for years and I've only just recently bought this one because normally I just reupholster a chair. So my technique may be somewhat lacking, but as you can see, I am getting dirt out. So I'm going to push on and uh, keep giving it a good clean. But any tips you can give me on using these, please do. Now, I just wanted to show you this that I picked up from my charity shop that I always go to that I love to support. £40 for this whole set. There was just a little bit of the cane coming away. So I've got clamps out and some glue on that. But the cushions are so clean, they're neutral, they are unbelievably comfy. The only thing I don't like are the back cushions. They just look a little bit old fashioned to me. But when you take them off, how stylish does that become? Put some lovely big fluffy pillows on there, they'll be fabulous. But what to do with those back cushions? Now you know I hate waste, I have a plan. I'm going to use them as seat cushions on my other cane furniture. This set on the house veranda is in need of a, another spruce up. So I think I'm going to take that off there and I'm going to use those on the cottage veranda. I got these two chairs and a table for, I think it was £23 several years ago. And I put a white paint on them and then I've just let them weather. Now I'm sanding them down. I'm going to give them a good wash just to take off any flaky paint before I take them to their new home. Now, I don't think I quite like them on the angle. I think they're gonna go straight and face each other. I'm making a coffee table out of potato chitting trays. I bought a job lot of these many years ago. So you'll see them in lots of my videos in various guises. The cushions have dried in the sun, so I'm gonna protect them with some Scotchgard fabric spray. The old metal chair supports tend to leave an imprint, a pattern, on the fabric of the cushions. So I'm using a piece of cardboard between them and the cushion, just so I can keep rotating the cushion and there's no marks on it. As it's quite a warm, sunny, windy day, the Scotch Guard has dried very quickly. Can't have a porch without a rocking chair and this rocking chair is really quite special to me. It was a present from hubby when our son was born by a cesarean section 26 years ago. I've got some vintage containers that I want to use on here. Now this is made of copper, it's like a copper bin. Again, it was really shiny years ago, but I actually love it when it weathers down. This is an old enamel bread bin, part of an auction job lot, and I've used the lid to make a light shade in the bedroom of the cottage. 
This old galvanised tub is watertight and I found it here when we first moved in. The giant ruler pinned to the wall is going to be a measuring stick for grandchildren if I'm ever blessed with them. It was my mother-in-law's. So the structure is done now onto the pretty things. I love a wooden crate. I have so many of them and I find them so versatile for styling. The faux summer flowers that I've popped in here came from Home Sense some years ago and just brighten up this area. I'm often asked why I have a dresser, a hutch outside and my response generally is why not? It's got an exterior product on it to protect it and with all those shelves it's a wonderful opportunity for styling. We're using all those auction finds that I have, things that I wouldn't necessarily have in the house or it gives me an opportunity to pull together colours that, for example, here I'm using green, I'm using the woody tones, the rustic tones. Um, it's a great opportunity to get all these things out on display rather than gathering dust in my storage unit. Plus, I also like my outdoor spaces to feel like rooms, whether that's on the verandas or out in the garden. coffee table I'm using an old metal tray and some plants that I've just potted up from the garden. The bars will be filled with greenery and then I'm putting out some books on birds and wildflowers. This is another pot that seems to match the colourway on the veranda here that was found in a job lot from auction. Quite often you get these lots and random things are put in them and this was one of them which I think is actually going to work really well out here. I'm so pleased with how this has actually turned out but the shelf is really quite narrow so I'm really having to style with purpose here so I'm finding the narrowest candlesticks and pots that I can. Three posts here were actually offcuts from the uprights that I used to build the main house veranda. Again, the pots that I'm using here are going to get water into them and then I'm going to use clippings from the garden. I never purposely go out and buy new fabrics for my outside spaces. I just downgrade what I've got in the house. So as my colour schemes change over the years, I keep those throws and cushions knowing that at some stage I'll be able to use them outside. And as these have little bits of blue in them and the bath is blue, they seem to be working really well at this end of the veranda. And yes, I do leave my throws and cushions out all year round because we use our spaces all year round. These big fluffy green cushions were originally grey and the sunlight coming through the window bleached them into green, which is actually ideal for this space. And the same with these throws. This was originally green and it's been bleached by the sun and it's turned brown, which suits here. And as I always say, waste not, want not. 
I rarely throw anything away. Now, as necessary as plugs are, be it indoor or outdoor, I really think they're ugly. So I'm going to use an old crate over this. So it's very easy to access. You just lift it out of the way and the door still opens back and the little cabin hook works. So it's practical. I love mixing real and faux inside the house and I'm no different outdoors. This was a TK Maxx find and I'm wedging it into position with old fur cones and then finishing off with some big fur cones on the top and that will stop the wind from blowing it over. Although I don't know if it'll stay in this position, I need to bring the fresh greenery onto the veranda just to see whether or not it's going to work there. But before I do that, I'm going to fill up all the vessels with water and then go and get some cuttings. My go-to every time for fresh greenery is Le Landai. And at this time of the year, we have an abundance of cow parsley. The hedgerows are full of it. Le Landai is so great to use in this way because it holds water so well and will last a good two to three months. So after all that work, I think it's time for a bath as the sun goes down. And of course, it's going to be some gin and tonic bubbles. Thank you so much for watching and I do hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, you know the drill, hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you're not already, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. I do a new video every week and I would really love it if you would come back here next week and join me. Until then, take care. Bye bye.